Hi YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the clutch in your Ferrari or Maserati after you've physically installed it. This is probably the most important step in installing the clutch. Everything up to this point is just like changing the clutch in a normal vehicle, just a little bit more fiddly because they're Italian cars. I've been putting this video off for a while because originally I wanted to do it as a full guide on how to do your diagnostics and testing of the transmission system while you were in there. However, that's turned out to be a little bit more involved than I originally intended, so that will come as a part four later on. Right now, I'm just gonna focus on showing you exactly what you need to do to make the car drive correctly once you have that clutch installed and you get moving. I've been waiting for you. If you own a Fiat from this era, such as the Maserati Grand Sport, Coupe, the early Quattroportes of Gran Turismos, or a Ferrari F355, F430, 575, and 599, probably missed a couple in there, this process will be almost exactly the same for your Fiat, with a couple of generational differences. I started this process after troubleshooting some issues with this vehicle when I picked it up. And if you're one of those people who has bought a used car and you think it's normal for your vehicle to need to require you to lift off the throttle in order to get smooth gear changes, then I really strongly recommend you watch the earlier videos in this series because that is a sign of a fault. So time to unwrap my food and get it on the road. One eternity later. Hi everyone, uh, if you're an astute viewer, you may have noticed that my beard, hair and outfit have changed between the last scene and this scene and that's because I had some camera trouble, so it's taken me a few weeks to actually finish this video. Now we've got that out of the way, let's move on. In order to set up your clutch, you're going to need a decent aftermarket tool like the Launch X431 Pro Mini. You can buy these for about $800 on eBay, uh, and they'll be a legitimate tool. There are plenty of knockoffs where they'll sell you a dodgy uh, dongle and um, the, so uh, the software as an app for your phone. I'd probably stay away from that because you're not really going to be sure which version of the Maserati and Ferrari software you're going to get. However, that's for you to solve and not for me, so I'm going to show you how to set up your clutch. So you get your dongle, and it'll go into your OBD port, which is from, at least on the right-hand drive cars, just under the steering wheel. That's now plugged in. So I'll take you through the process. From here, we're going to select our vehicle, and you would normally just go down to Maserati, and off you go, select your model, but I'm just going to quickly make a detour to Ferrari. And I'm going to just show you that the cars are in fact the same. Uh, the transmissions will talk to a range of models. This particular transmission shares some functions with the, uh, the 360, the 430, uh, the 575 and the 599. So I'm just going to pick a 430. We'll go and have a chat here. We'll check our... Where is it? Uh... Magneti Morelli, this one here, the uh, CFC 231. And all of a sudden I can get in and I can perform a lot of the functions that I would need. So I can do this from a couple of different systems, but they, they are uh, the same. So from the Ferrari I can uh, 
I can control a lot of the Maserati stuff, but we're not going to do that. I'm just going to go back. It's actually a really useful thing to know that you can log in with a different model using this launch. Some functions haven't been implemented on every model in the software, so if you need to access something that isn't available when you go into your Grand Sport, it may in fact be available on the F430 or the Gran Turismo. Uh, there's a lot of similarity between these cars. In fact, the early versions of the Gran Turismo use the same ECU as this car and it gives me access to functions that aren't accessible through the Grand Sport software on the launch, so something to keep in mind. So you've just got your car uh, all back together. The first thing you're going to need to do is go into the special functions and you're going to bleed your clutch and bleed your uh, actuator if you need to, if it, if it was disconnected, but you should only need to bleed the clutch if all you're doing is a clutch job. So if you select the clutch bleeding actuator, all it will do is cycle up the pump pressure and it will keep pressure in the system until you're done bleeding. We'll come into special function and we're going to hit the clutch bleeding actuator. Now you should be able to hear that whirring away in the background. All it's doing is cycling up the system pressure with the pump periodically. Uh, it's not going to damage anything because what it will do is just go through the pressure relief valve. And But normally you'd be under the car bleeding the clutch while this is cycling up and having someone pump fuel, uh, the, the, having someone pump hydraulic fluid into the reservoir. So you can actually hear now the pressure relief valve opening up from the extra pressure since I'm not actually bleeding the clutch at this point. Once you've bled your clutch, you're going to need to turn the engine on for a little bit and let it self-calibrate the clutch position. You'll then need to come into special function, go to clutchware, and you're going to need to read the value of the new clutch, closed clutch position. You then go and get that value, you enter it into the clutch configuration, so you read it, then you write your new value, which is 20.80. You then turn the engine on. Read again, you'll get a weird value. Turn it off. Wait till it stops beeping. Turn the car back on. Go back to your gearbox. And then read your clutch where again. And it, this will, the very first time you do this, it'll actually be a little strange because it will self calibrate the position a bit funny, and you may get a bit of a funny result with your clutch close position. If I turn the engine back on, it will probably go down to zero. Because it calibrates that position every time the engine starts. Anyway, I just changed my value to 20.8 for the sake of this video, whereas the actual value is 20.41, so I'm going to change that back. Turn it off. Turn the ignition back on. gearbox and there we go 20.41 and I've used 4% of my clutch so I know that's what it was because that's what it was when I set it up I was just changing the values to show you how you set this value so that it can truck track your clutch wear. So now you've set your clutch wear, so you've got 
0% used, it will start to increase over time. The next thing you need to do before moving it is to adjust the piss or the point of initial slip. Now, pretty much everything you come across with this is completely wrong. Adjusting the piss is not about setting up the way that the clutch behaves. It's about setting up a different parameter called the clutch wear index, which I will bring up on the screen. Now, the clutch wear index is set through the position of the clutch or the point of initial slip. So they're kind of related, but you can set this to any value and still get the correct clutch wear index. So on mine, mine is a 5.29, but my actual clutch wear index is bang on where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to come down here to reading the data stream and where is my clutch wear index? Uh, clutch overheating time. So there's all kinds of useful stuff here like the gearbox, oil temperature, uh, and oil leakage and things like that which we'll go into detail on part 5. But right now I just want to show you this on clutch wear degree. So I get this lovely number here, 3738. Now if you have a look at that graph I put up, the actual target range for this is 4000. Now what this tells me is that my clutch has a certain amount of slip and a certain amount of grip that the system is expecting. You don't have to live by this. I've, I've actually found that you can set this wear degree down as low as 800 and still have the transmission work fine. What happens is the automatic mode becomes completely useless and I'm assuming that's because it's probably programmed with a certain amount of clutch slip expected between gear changes. Right now I have it set at the factory position. But if I was to go to a track I would set my PIS so that I get a much lower value. I find around 1200 to be really good if you're only driving in sports mode, it's very direct. But this is the actual value that matters, not the PIS. And if someone says to you, hey, I will do your clutch, we'll set the PIS, it'll be perfect, and you drive off, they actually don't know what they're doing, they think they know, or they've gotten lucky enough that it hasn't caused any trouble. So the correct process for setting up your clutch is to the very first thing you need to do is come into special function and set your PIS. So what you'll do is your, if we have a look here where it says uh, our written value, it gives us a range, I think. So when we go to enter into here it is, when we go to enter into PIS it says it's got a minimum of 4 and a maximum of 4.5. First thing you should do, you can see mine's 5.29 but it's bang on. First thing you should do is just set it at 5.0. Now, once you've set it to 5.0, that's just going to give you a value. And the reason it doesn't matter what it is specifically is because there is going to be tolerance in the position of the clutch and the F1 sensor and the magnet and all those parts. On mine, you can see that the tolerances mean that for my gearbox to be relatively tight, it actually has a relatively loose PIS. On some cars, they can run it right down to, um, you know, 4.7, 4.5, and still have a loose PIS. So again, that PIS is just a value that controls something that the computer is looking for. So you'll come in here, you'll read your value, you'll go in, and you're going to write 5.0, and off you go. So once that's done, you actually need to move the car. And you've got to remember that this car is not an automatic. It's a manual with an automated system. So what you need to do is you need to go and find somewhere with a bit of a hill. Like for me, my driveway, if I let off my brakes a bit, my car will move, which you should be able to see happening. And what you need to do is start your car, let off the brake, and see if your car rolls back. If it does, that's good, because your system isn't so tight that the clutch is riding. If it's too tight and the clutch is riding, you need to loosen this value. And once that's done, you just touch the accelerator when it's in gear, you touch the accelerator while it's in gear, and you get a feel for how quickly your car is gonna launch forward. If it feels normal, then you're done 
for the next 500 to 1,000 kilometers. So I'll turn that off so I don't upset my neighbors, and I'll explain what happens next. Okay, so you've now bled the clutch, set the new clutch closed position, try saying that a few times, and you have set your starting PIS, driven for a 500k, is nice and easy to allow the clutch to be bedded in. You now need to set the PIS correctly. So what you'll need to do is you bring up your system and you'll have a clutch wear degree value of some kind. It may be too low, it may be too high, and what you need to do is get it to be somewhere between 3,000 and 4,000 if you want to go to the OEM specs. What I want to show you now is how you actually set this value using the PIS. So what you need to do is you go to your special function and you set your PIS. Now, I've already gone and set my value low. Um, my value for the correct clutch wear index is 5.29. So I'm gonna just go in here again and set it a bit lower. I know that I can go as low as 4.8 without writing the clutch on this. So I've set that, and I'm gonna go back to my data stream. I'm gonna read that same value, and I've got 36.04. I'm gonna just bring it up on a graph. And what I'm gonna do now, in, uh, I'm in an industrial area where there's little to no traffic. Uh, normally doing this in an industrial area at night, which is how I originally did it, is the best way to do it, so that you uh, don't get in anyone's way. But all you're gonna do is you just go in first, and you take off, get the car moving so the clutch is fully disengaged, and stop. Once you come to a stop, you do it again. Fully engaged, come to a stop. again. Each time you do this, that clutch wear degree, which you should be able to see on the screen, will revise its position. So right now it's revising down because there's less slip because I've set the PIS lower. So again, if I come down to a stop, we're at five, three, five, six, seven now, come to a stop, I'll wait for the traffic to go past, and take off again it's gone down to 3493. So each time you do this, it will get closer to what the actual clutch wear degree is. 3453, three, until it's relatively stable. So in my case, I know what a good PIS is to get the correct clutch wear degree, so I'm gonna go back into my function and I'm gonna bring the value back up to 5.29, which is the correct value for my clutch wear. I'm going to go back to my data stream and this time when I take off you're going to see this value go up. So if you do want to play around with the system you can set pretty much any PIS value you want. Uh, if it goes too tight it will stall at takeoff. I'll see if I can get it to do that. So the lowest value you can go is 4.0. Let's see what happens. Alright, so I've gone as low, I reckon it'll stall. Ah, no, there's enough movement in mine, probably because I've had the flywheel surfaced a couple of times in its history. Uh, but if you do go too low and it is hot, it will stall. Uh, before I had the flywheel surfaced for the last install, it was actually possible to stall my car when I set the PIS as low as it would go. But um, that is really tight now, so if we were to go back to our clutch wear degree uh, in our data stream and try and take off you can see it drops quite substantially each time it gets fully engaged I've also observed that if you're in sport mode, the car will cope with a tighter uh, 
PIS and therefore much wear to green much better. Uh, and I think it's because of the way that the uh, gear changing profiles are programmed. Um, it's much more direct in sport mode. Uh, and personally it does actually feel a lot better having the clutch really tight on this car. But it just will not work at all in the non-sport mode. It gets uh, very clunky. Uh, which you can probably hear in the background uh, as it gets just very direct and it, and it can unsettle the gearbox a bit but in sport mode that tends to go away and I believe that's because of uh, the quicker profile so you might actually be able to run a tighter clutch using the Formula Dynamics module which I do have the install for that coming up at some point so I'll be able to report on that and I'll just pull over and set a more sensible PIS so I don't burn out my clutch from it rubbing in idle. But you can see that that wear degree has dropped substantially just from setting that very tight PIS. So the clutch wear degree actually tells you what the behavior of the clutch is and the PIS is how you control that behavior. 